How y'all doing? About over a month ago, by the time I started filling this, I was over at the used bookstore, and there was a book I've noticed there from previous visits, but I had to pick up this time around because it just seems like a very interesting, humorous read. I found it in a fantasy science fiction section, and there's a reason why when you find out who the publishers are, but it's actually a murder mystery. And while I cover, we can't judge a book by its cover, as the old saying goes, a good cover, if done right, should tell you the theme, the humor, or whatever it is that what the book is about, what to expect from it. And the book I have here is Bimbos of the Deaf Son by Sharon McCrum. Now, as again, you can take a look right here, you can tell the level of humor that, you know, this book may involve itself in. And, um, and, the, and the title of the book is a bit meta within the story. Now, I would put the level of humor on par with, say, Robert, Ashton, Robert Aspirin's Myth Adventures or Douglas Adams' um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So if you like those two, you might want to put this and, you know, might want to give this one a try here um, as far as, you know, uh, how it goes. But there's no fantasy or science fiction within the story. It's, you know, what it is, it takes, it's a murder mystery set in a science fiction fantasy convention. The convention in question is Rubicon, which takes place at this hotel over a weekend here. Um, in no particular order, the characters are introduced, um, some minor, some major. Jay Omega, who is this um, engineer physics teacher at the university, you know, he's now promoting his first science fiction um, novel. It's hard science, it's hard sci-fi, but the cover does make it look a little sleazy a bit. And as, you know, his book is titled Bimbos of the Deaf Son. He didn't like that title. He doesn't even like the cover where there's a beautiful woman in a bikini strap, you know, holding onto a scientist's leg right here. But he came up with the idea that of, you know, of how sunspots affect specific forms of equipment. And, and also, he couldn't do it in, in actual research, so he creates a science fiction story on it. And at the same time, the, you know, the, the effects of these sunspots affect women in making them dumb and all that, because, you know, in connection to sex link traits, what have you. It doesn't go too far into it. But that's where the title of this book gets a little meta. So... He writes this book, and his um, love interest, I'll you know, put, it, put it in such a way, Dr. Marion Farley, who teaches science fiction at the university, has a you know, a doctorate in folklore and in, in mythology. She she is also familiar with the setting and how you know because she herself was a geek at, at a younger age. Then you know, so she knows the culture very well. She knows how these conventions work, how science fiction, since she teaches it. She's also you know. Um, she was a shy, um, not so attractive one, but she um, changed herself to where she she dresses up in appeal and you know becomes very appealing of, you know, for it. I'm almost aggressing here, but anyway, she's sort of the love interest. So the two characters you know are in love with each other, but they haven't um, expressed it um, you know entirely in the next step because Dr. Marion Farley is uh, tenure minded, and depending on whether they both get tenure or not get tenure affects what stage of relationship it is. I will spoil at this point that they never resolved that, you know, in this book. But that's just, you know, that's just who those two are. Now, in this science fiction convention, the big name around will be um, Appen Dunganen. He's a fantasy writer here who wrote um, over 20 books of a famous character, Triton Runewind. Sort of a uh, druidic um, warrior type set in sort of a Scottish, um, you know, uh, sort of a mythical Scotland and what have you. The guy himself is um, the author is a huge fan of that type of culture, so he's based his character within that. Now, many you look at this guy right here. He's this a uh, um, guy in a cow, five foot one, who wears a cowboy get up there. He has a Mickey Rooney face. And some would say, you know, he's famous for writing over 20 books for this character. Others would say he wrote this same one book over 20 times. So, in other words, how formulaic it is. And the thing is, this, you know, Appen Dunganen is a terrible person. I mean, he treats everyone like crap. He's prima donna, um, has nothing but contempt for the people at the convention, you know, thinks too highly of himself. And deep down, he, you know, he, he's, you know, he, the, the character made him money, but not as much as he would like in some aspects. And, you know, you can see further on, you know, how much he thinks about it over time. Of course, this is the murder victim here. And when he, you know, he, at the convention, the first day, he, um, at the dinner party where J. Omega and Marion are having dinner with him, you get to see how disgusting this guy is. He's constantly drinking um, hard liquor, what have you. And and he's also the judge of the costume 
um, contest where he picks obviously the prettiest one, you know, the woman of, you know, in Escapee's outfit or what have you. He threw chairs at one of the costume contestants who dresses up like his main character, Triton Moonwind. He, after the costume contest, he get, you know he turns around, and gives the audience a speech of how pathetic they are, they need to get lives and what have you, you know, completely insulting them. He tells everybody that he's going up to his hotel room, and he's going to finish up his newest Triton Moonwind book. He's not going to uh, want to be disturbed by anyone, and he'll turn it in tomorrow. So the convention goes on later tonight, and while he's finished, while he's finished the, the book, there somebody comes in and shoots him. So that's that's the mystery part of it. So who who had motivation to um, shoot him? How about everybody? You know, some more than others, but everyone had a reason to hate him, and you know, probably want to shoot him. It could be um, like Chip Livingston, who is this um, hu huge mega fan. He know you know he's one of those fans that knows about that he's written. Uh, lots of articles and magazines and fanzines and what have you, but the interesting thing about it is no one's ever tri uh, personally seen the guy and recognized him for Chip Livingston. So, is he a possible murderer? I don't know. Maybe it's also Cliff Morgan, the guy who caused Playa's Triton wound win and had chairs thrown at him, despite the fact that he took it in stride and smiled the whole way. You know, maybe he was, you know, maybe he was somehow offended by it. Or maybe it was Monk Malone, who everyone has seen at a convention. He's also a huge mega fan, you know, and... And some, you know, oh, and it could be any others. It could have been um, Miles or, um, well, not say. You know, there's also other characters as well, not necessarily related. You know, they show up in the story, like uh, Miles and Diefenbacher, two of the convention coordinators who had to put up with um, Dungan's crap, but also characters who had nothing to do with it, like um, Donnie McGrory, who's a Scottish folk singer who has nothing to do with the convention. He was just there at a hotel while he was on tour in America while all this stuff was happening. He's not really liking what all this is going on here. He thinks they're all a bunch of loonies. He, you know, in fact, they, you know, in the convention, there's a Star Trek themed wedding, and they wanted him to because he has a Scottish accent to be Scotty. That's, you know, it's things like that. But he can he comes in at a few points. It gives him, you know, helps out a few key areas. So yeah, so. One well, of my thoughts on the story? Well, I have deeply enjoyed this. It's over 200 pages, but it's very quick. And if you find out who the publisher is, you could probably you could probably see why it was a very quick read. I love the um, uh, the banter between J Omega and Marion, and how their relationship is spoken and unspoken about it. Um, like for instance, when he when J Omega is promoting his book, one of the guys at convention looks at this and sees the attractive woman on the cover there. He says. Is this sleazy? You know, kind of hopes there. And Marion's like, no, this guy's idea of a stag fail was watching Bambi. I just, you know, lines like that I deeply enjoy. The Scottish folk singer, Donnie McMurray, uh, had a thought in his mind that if American beer was taken to a testing lab, it'll come, the results would come back and say, your horse has diabetes. It's stuff like that I enjoy. Um, but, yeah, they, it was, um, so... I don't know uh, much about um, mysteries to where, you know, this would be a, if you're a huge mystery fan, you would deeply enjoy this. You might like the humor. I think it's kind of a, like a light snack relative to heart, more harder mysteries, but the humorous side would definitely attest to that. So, um, I would, you know, I deeply enjoyed it. And you probably, if for you guys who read mysteries all the time, you would probably guess um, who done it in a very short amount of time. But I think it's just a good ride, a good snack, so to speak, food for, you know, for such things. So, I mentioned earlier that this book was found in a fantasy science fiction convention, despite the fact that it's a murder mystery that takes place in a, a um, fantasy sci-fi convention. Well, why is it there? Well, the publisher should tell you that. Tactical Studies Rules. Not familiar with that? Well, how about TSR? The older... Geeks and uh, will know what that is. That is the people who publish Dungeons and Dragons. They were the ones. In fact, it explains why Jeff Easley he did um, the cover art and the interior art. Um, I didn't know at that time. You know, it. You know, that's Dr. Marion Farrelly, and um, shows a lot of the characters. Here's Cliff um, Clifford Morgan dressed up as Triton Runewind, and so. Um, Based on that, you know, a lot of you guys out there may not like when you read this the jab at geek culture. I know there's a lot of people out there who don't like, say, the Big Bang Theory because it pokes fun at, um, at um, 
of the uh, geeks, uh, geek culture, and all that one. But I think because it's opposed by TSR, who is one of the kings of you know establishing geek culture in one of its aspects, especially in fantasy role playing, um, it's kind of I think of it as like holding a mirror to the people at the time, just in the late '80s. So it take you know it doesn't. Oh, have all negative aspects of it, just the positives and negatives of people who are into this. I think it's a good mirror. And if you were there at the time, at the 80s or 90s, who joined these things or got into all this, you'd be like, yeah, that's how it is for a lot of people. So, um, I deeply enjoyed this. Um, very quick read, straight forward, you know, all the way through. There's a sequel book that Sharon McCrum did. Um, involving J Omega here, which I have yet to read. I don't know if I'll go around searching and find it, but if I recognize it and I'll pick it up and see what that one's about. So there you go. Bimbo's Up to Deaf Son by Sharon McCrum. You know, if you want a nice, good, um, you know, short, uh, easy going mystery about it, that's, you know, won't take you too long and you like the idea of a murder mystery at a science fiction fantasy convention, um, give this one a go. Uh, if this was filmed, I... I, I would think if you had to do this one today, you have to set it in the late 80s. The right technology, the way things, you know, the architecture, how hotels look at the time, um, whatever was out at the time, you have to be specific on that and how people dressed up and such things. So I think it's the only, it's one of the reasons how I got so immersed in this is I could just imagine the old fashioned computers and, and what have you. So again, Bimbo's of the Death Sound by Sharon McCrum. Um, give this one a go. I think you, if you like sort of that light humor type of thing from Aspirin or um, Douglas Adams, this one you could probably put as a lesser um, cousin to that. So thank you all for watching. You have a nice day.